Good evening and welcome to the news of Ashuruk TV. Today's headlines include The Sudanese government announces that the end of the UNIMED mission will be on October 2020. Mr. Omar al Diger asserts his support for the transitional government's efforts to cooperate with the U.S. administration. The Ministry of Health has announced 170 new cases of COVID-19, bringing the total number to 4,146. The chairman of the Traditional Sovereign Council, Mr. Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, affirmed in a telephone call with the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State, Mr. Tibor Naji, and the American Envoy of Sudan, Mr. Donald Booth, that the future of the United Nations mission and the African Union in Darfur, known as UNIMED mission, does not include an extension for the new period, and that the end of the mission will be on October 2020. However, he discussed with the American officials the importance of the decision by the United Nations that the new mission to Sudan should be composed according to Sudan's letter to the United Nations dated the 27th of February 2020 and the national vision presented yesterday in the United Nations. The spokesman for the armed forces, Mr. Ammar Mohammed Hassan, has denied the landing of an Israeli plane in Khartoum airport. He noted that the plane that arrived in Khartoum airport belongs to the American International Flight Aid Company. It had landed at the airbase carrying medical materials and was received by Major General Dr. Hazim of the Military Department of Medical Services. Mr. Ammar Mohammed added that the plane was received by a committee which was formed for the reception of the medical aid, explaining the Sudanese airspace is open only through known arrangements. He indicated that there is no agreement for the Israeli airplane to enter the Sudanese airspace, nor its landing on the Sudanese airport. The head of the Sudanese Congress party, Mr. Omar al Diger, discussed in a media conference held at the Sudanese news agency about the party's vision on the current political issues. He stressed that the need for all Sudanese parties to cooperate with the mission in the manner that supports the main issues and priorities, which are determined by the Sudanese people through their official and popular institutions. He asserted his support for the transitional government's effort to cooperate with the U.S. administration in order to drop the name of Sudan from the list of state sponsors of terrorism. He called on the U.S. administrations to speed up the removal of Sudan's name from the list of state sponsors of terrorism. He appealed to the International Committee and the Sudanese Friends Forum to provide Sudan with the material and political support for the success of the transitional period. Southern Sudan's mediation for Sudan's peace in the Juba platform has denied any connection with the political differences taking place within the Revolutionary Front. The South Sudan mediation has stressed that its role is limited to mediation between the government of Sudan and the armed struggles movements that have accepted to attend the negotiation meeting in the Juba platform. The mediation said in a statement it has issued today that it is not its duty to recognize the splits or the withdrawals of any parties from another, nor would it label any party, but rather that the parties should label themselves in the name they want. Therefore, the mediation rejects any intention to involve it in the difference of the Sudanese Revolutionary Front. The member of the Transitional Sovereign Council, Mr. Mohammed Hassan al Ta'ayushi, has said that there is a tight coordination between the various security members and their roles in extending the security and preserving the lives and properties of the citizens. 
during his inspection of the seized quantities of weapons and motorcycles which were used by the fugitive groups in the plunder and intimidations of the citizens in the Tulus area, Mr. Ta'ayi stressed the government's commitment to imposing the state's status and, est and establishing security and tranquility amongst its citizens, asserting that the government's move to collect illegal weapons and confine them only to the hands of the regular forces in order to achieve a comprehensive peace and stability in the country. The member of the Sovereign Council, Mr. Siddiq Tower, has arrived at Al Damazin City. Mr. Tower will head a joint meeting with the State's Council of Ministers and the Security Committee, which will be followed with a meeting with the Health Emergencies Committee. The visiting delegations to Al Damazin is expected to hold a meeting with the Forces of Freedom and Change, the Resistance Committee, and the Committee of Change and Services, as well as a meeting with the leaders of the Native Administration. The member of the Transitional Sovereign Council, Ms. Rajat Nikola, has visited the Catholic Church in Sinja. During the visit, Ms. Raja was briefed on the situation in the church and headed to an enlightenment from the pastor, Father Natalie Edward, about the performance programs and future plans of the church and its role in addressing the concerns and issues of the region. Meanwhile, Ms. Raja Nicola has asserted her support to the church's programs to achieve its goals and carry its mission. The member of the Transitional Sovereign Council, Ms. Aisha Musa, announced the government's interest in overcoming obstacles, solving problems, and providing the necessary support to achieve development and provide services to the citizens. She commended the executive performance of the government of North Kurdistan State with regards to providing services and positively dealing with the directives of the corona pandemic noting that all the components of the transitional phase were put in place to achieve peace as a top priority. This visit included reviewing the conditions of the inmates at the national prison and holding a meeting with the leaders of the civil administration in North Kurdistan. The Federal Minister of Health has announced the registration of 170 new cases of coronavirus in Sudan, including 108 in Khartoum, 33 in Al Jazeera, and 11 cases in North Kurdistan. They have also confirmed 14 new deaths and 85 recovered cases, bringing the number of confirmed cases to 4,146, including 184 deaths. And the total number of cases recovered has reached to 588 cases. Mr. Khalid Ibrahim, who is in charge of the affairs of the Sudanese embassy in Egypt, has performed an opening, has promised opening the borders between the two countries soon and the return of the stranded Sudanese to their homeland. He said in a statement to Suna that the delegation from the Sudanese embassy in Cairo has visited the stranded persons to extend the Eid al-Iftar greetings in the area of al-Muhandisin and al-Faisal area, focusing on the elderly and the sick individuals. The Sudanese embassy in Egypt has congratulated the people of Sudan in general on Eid al-Iftar, praising the role played by the Sudanese community in Egypt and their great stance during the crisis of the stranded. Reminding headlines. The Sudanese government has announced that the end of the UNIMED mission will be on October 2020. Mr. Omar al Diger asserted his support for the transitional government's effort to cooperate with the U.S. administration. 
The Ministry of Health has announced 170 new cases of COVID-19, bringing the total number to 4,146. That was all from Ashuruk TV. See you next time.